Now reading from Matthew 12:31, Wherefore I say unto you, All manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Now this is the James Strong's exhaustive concordance of the 1611 KJV. There are 8,674 words in the Old Testament. If we nominate this as years, 8.674 years, it converts to 3168 days, or 86.74 years, the age of Benedict XVI on January 11, 2014. There are 5,624 words in the Greek New Testament, so subtract 5624 from 8674, and the product is 30 or 3050, and is the word Yah found only once in the Old Testament. This is an indication the New Testament has removed Yah. Psalms 68.4 is where it's found. Sing unto God, sing praises to his name. Extol him that rideth upon the heavens by his name, Yah, and rejoice before him. And the fleur de lis, the flower of the lily, is from France. The same is found on the Marachal coat of arms. The French connection is via Isabel de Avenel, descended from King William the Conqueror, the Norman King. Isabel married William I, the lion, after his first wife, Emmergard, died. Emmergard gave birth to Margaret, Margotta, and Alexander II. Margaret and Margotta married into the Marachal Norman line. After the death of Ermagard, Isabel gave birth to their son, Henry Golightly. These combinations of genetic lines from France, England, via Margaret, Queen of England, Scotland and Israel, Judah, via Malcolm III, then King William the Conqueror, descends to the wife of Francis Golightly. Mary Harrison, she the descendant of Lord Harrison, who came to England from the royal family of Habsburg in 847 and changed his name from Habsburg to Harrison. The Marischal name married the Irish line of kings via Alice Maloney, 1897, and via Francis Golightly, Mary descends from the Habsburgs via Harrison, from there the Habsburg line to the kings of Jerusalem and via Malcolm III the line via Ireland back to Zedekiah. The prophet Jeremiah transported two daughters to Tara Island in 583 BC. That's the two daughters of Zedekiah. The great monarch and his pope will rule the world. Premel, 5th century. And so with his apostolic letter, Benedict XVI wrenched the throne out of the clutches of Freemasonry and Judaism. Christ is back. These Catholic prophets predicted the King and Lord will choose his Pope and he will rule the Church under the guidance of his Lord. These are all things that have already occurred. Ireland occupied by the English for seven centuries, England leaving the Catholic Church in the 16th century, of course, under the monster Henry VIII. The discovery of the continent of America, the French Revolution, 1789, the decapitation of the French king, Catholic King Louis the Sixteenth, King of France, uh, of distributing arms to the poor, and then the French Revolution's satanic Masonic creed, the Reign of Terror, execution of the Catholic monarch Louis the Sixteenth on January the twenty-first, 1793. Inauguration of the apostasy, the Masonic French Revolution of 1789. Then modern history continues, modern ventures, the steam engine, motor car, the aeroplane, submarines, nuclear power, television, Henry Ford's Model T. Then the rise of the lower classes, the advent of democracy, which is actually demonocracy, immigrants at Ellis Island, New York, etc., etc. Then seven, communism, Jewish communist leader Vladimir Lenin. 
the development of literacy, the proliferation of pornography, low moral standards, permissiveness, deviations. And then uh, who can count the souls damned by Hollywood's vicious vice-ridden entertainment industry. And then of course there's the crisis in the church, new liturgy, the apostasy of many bishops. Rome will lose the faith and become, become the seat of the Antichrist. The church will be in eclipse. And of course the Antichrist is Francis. Now these words were spoken by Notre Dame de la Salette, Our Lady of la Salette, to Melanie Calvert in 1846 AD. Now this I might say is not a comprehensive listing, merely a few examples, but if the first part of these prophecies has come to pass, should we disregard the second? I do not disregard the second part. Here are the events which we can now ex expect. Again, these have already occurred. This is a, a quote from the Catholic prophecies. Civil wars, revolutions, breakdown of authority everywhere. You have the big nick. Revolutionaries begin to publicly rear their ugly heads in the late 1950s. Military coups even in Western countries. An anti-pope in Rome, the developing apostasy becomes universal. And then you have the election of anti-pope Angelo Roncalli, a Freemason, and he actually usurped the papacy from Pope Gregory the 17th. He was formerly called Cardinal Siri, and that was at the 1958 conclave, October 26, 1958. With the usurpation of the papal chair from the Christ lawful vicar, Pope Gregory the 17th. And the persecution of the church by communist governance, abetted at first by many of the hierarchy and clergy, complete destruction of the church's structures at the hands of the communists and even those who collaborated them. And then the late close friend of anti-Pope John Paul II, John Cardinal O'Connor, pictured smiling with two full apron Freemasons. Natural disasters, earthquakes, floods, droughts, famines, epidemics. The death total from the December 26, 2004 tsunami, earthquake, tidal wave disaster was more than 200,000. And, um, and of course, this was the tsunami was caused by a nine megaton bomb dropped into the Indian Ocean. The USA, Freemason, Jews, uh, Bush administration, Skull and Bonesmen, they were all behind it. Israel was behind it. Israel's behind Fukushima. Israel's behind the coming down of the Twin Towers. It's Israel, the Jews who call themselves Jews and are not the enemy of all mankind. And there is no communism, there is only Judaism, communism is a direct result of Judaism. Any ism is a, a, a product of Judaism. Uh, they are the, the maggots that infest. Then you've got cosmic phenomena, three days of darkness, collapse of communism, Church of Rome, Freemasonry and Judaism, Lucifer. The coming terrible three days of darkness, chastisement. Moving on. The great Catholic monarch is promised rebirth of the Catholic Church. New, valid, ecumenic council, restoration of former that is timeless disciplines in the Church. A holy pope occupies the chair of Peter. That is Benedict, renamed Petrus Romanos. And of course the ecumenical council mentioned is Vatican III that the Christ has already written for Pope Benedict. When he asked his opinion of Vatican II, and of course Vatican II is a complete abomination, is the door to the Jews, and is why the anti-Pope Ron Carly was ushered in at that point after the conclave had already elected Gregory the Seventeenth. He was under duress and threat from within the conclave. Never made it out. Already overturned inside the conclave and he was under guard every day of his life for the next 31 years until his death when it's reported that he was poisoned. So you had the anti-pope and his great claim to fame was Vatican II. Now what does this tell you about the, the kind of man that he was? He was only in the chair four and a half years. Vatican II was his uh, great big brainstorm. It started in 1962 and this guy's dead in June 1963. He died of stomach cancer. 
So what have we got today? We've got the Antichrist Francis rushing through the, the uh, what is it, beatification or the, or, or the, the sainthood of uh, Pope John Paul that was proposed years ago, just not too long after his death and it's being fast forwarded, as well as this Ron Carley Antichrist, the door to the enemy of all mankind and certainly the great apostasy that has already been covering the earth. So His Holiness Pope Gregorius XVII, or Cardinal Giuseppe Siri of Genoa, Italy, he was canonically elected Pope after the death of Pope Pius XII in 1958. Then he was threatened, put under grave duress at the conclave and immediately overthrown by the church's enemies from within. So the news never made it outside of the conclave. He, Siri, was then intimidated into keeping silent about his status, as were his cardinals, for 31 years. He died in 1989. Before his death in exile, this hidden pope was able to put a process in motion to continue the true and lawful papacy, which will indeed in our lifetime triumph over the imposter Ron Callian V2 sect, headed today by anti-Pope Francis, which is sacrilegiously usurped God's Catholic centuries, churches worldwide. Now the influence of course was immediate with the, the door open wide to 2,500 maggots putting together Vatican II and pass and hail as a, a great work. Well, Christ has torn it to pieces. It is the work of the enemy of all mankind. Vatican III has already been written. And will be announced to the world publicly upon the demise of the Antichrist, Francis. Now one of the surest facts emerging from this study is the rise of the great Christian king who will set up a new social order upon the ruins of democracy and communism. It is simply impossible to elude this conclusion. A few secondary facts emerge also. Communism will not converge and merge with democracy through dialogue and mutual compromise, nor will it be defeated by democracy in a third world war. Communism has achieved its aim without a global nuclear war. The Western democracies have broken down from inside, being totally consumed by Judaism, the root of all evil, preaching Judaism from all Christian churches worldwide. There is much more predicted by great men in Catholic history. Technology, the public is aware of, is 25 years behind what the Western world's fire agencies have at their disposal. Germ warfare departments, originating primarily in England in 1878, adopted the idea that the world is owned by the Jew. All people who were not genetically a Jew were animals placed on the earth with hands to serve them. Darwin had been set up by the devil to write the origin of species, there was no God, the idea, so that the education of children would have an avenue of thought with a logical anti-God with a logical anti-God logical evolved or okay Evolved all life developing over millions of years from lesser developed creatures. Take it back to one speck of life and ask where did that come from is never addressed for the answer is a rock. The idea was implemented along with the overpopulation idea. 
And so the eugenics took hold and science was directed to find ways to invent diseases or splice genetics between animals so that the human being could fall prey to manufactured diseases. By 1890, era the microplasma had been discovered and it is from this 300 nanometer speck a packet of DNA information could be crystallized containing a deadly flu, later killing 100 million with the Spanish flu. It all began before that with the infection of tobacco crops. The virus remained alive under conditions like those found in a tin of tobacco. The soldiers at the end of World War I were supplied with tobacco, called rollies, a slang term for rolling a cigarette. Tobacco to this day is the most addictive substance and low cost. A person who rolls cigarettes picks up the microplasma on their fingers and eventually rubs their eye and it would, in would go the virus to inhabit the body, floating through the blood until encountering an acidic location and the crystal would dissolve. Today they use mobile telephones to trigger the crystals to shatter. Even the electric meter in a house are now being changed to smart meters that use the electrical wiring as an antenna to listen to or transmit through into the house and trigger the crystal fed to the consumer in bread, cereals, water, sweets for the children, sugar, meat in particular, pork, and the list goes on. A super weapon is the modern computer, the portable laptop. While travelling through 11 countries, our laptop computers were continually picking up Wi-Fi signals, which are service providers you can long log on to if you have the password. However, the spy agencies track your movements with what is called an IP address or mobile phones. These devices cannot be shut off, and in the laptop, the modern machines have a camera so you can record and upload to the internet. With it, the spy agencies can watch and listen to every word you utter or what you type. When you and I started talking, that moment spelt the end of the world's Satanists. You being such an honest, trusting, forgiving man, a perfect man in every way, unaware of the evils surrounding you at every level. This is why you were placed in your position, all preordained, I might add to fool those around you into, into thinking they could keep you in a cocoon. So busy your efforts to rid the church of filth were stopped at every level, for this is what Satan does. It places Freemasons and Jews in positions of power. This is worldwide, so the church is the most important organization. People adore the Pope, albeit he, good or bad, it's show business. My wife and I have contacted every church organisation worldwide. Not one is interested. Why? They are satanic. We contacted and delivered books to the head of the church in Melbourne, left a book that any person reading it cannot deny the proofs. All of the cardinals were aware before the conclave. The computer world, as dangerous as it is, the tables were turned as my people are experts on how to spread the word. There is YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and MySpace, to name a few, that have ways to use to our advantage, as there are not enough spies watching us to react quickly enough to take down what we continually upload. So as complex as it is, the computer service providers are on automatic watch for my name or key phrases. And so knowing how these agencies use the system covertly, I have shown my people how the system works and they can also turn the tables. And I'll come back again in a bit.